we go. Look, last week, the reason I got this up here is to try to explain to you a little bit the message that I'm preaching this morning. I guess I'm titling it The Presence. The Presence. And so I want to get you like a little bit prepared for what I'm about to talk about. Because you see, I'm talking about the presence of the Lord. Last week, we talked about, and, and listen, one of the, some of the things that we, that we talk about the presence, there's a scripture out of Exodus chapter 24, verse 17. It says that the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. In another scripture, it says, Exodus 24, 16, and the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai and the cloud covered it six days. The glory of the Lord represents the presence of the Lord in the time frame of the Exodus. The pillar of cloud, cloud by night, the pillar of fire by day led the children of Israel through the wilderness upon their journey. The glory of God represents the presence of God and the presence of God in your personal life wants to lead you and guide you in your journey of life. The way that the glory or the presence of God leads you and guides you is very dependent upon this book right here. If you you're not putting your nose in this book. You're failing as a believer. I'm not here to speak condemnation over your life. I'm here to speak truth to you. You cannot live for God if you do not know what is written in the words upon this book. You, I'm going to do my best to present the word of God to you when you come into this place. But if you don't allow your eyes to rest upon the word of God, if you don't hide the word of God in your heart, you don't even know what disobedience to of God is. If you live a life of disobedience against God, God's not going to be for you. He won't be able to move in your life the way he wants to move in your life. The presence of God is directly connected to the word of God. If you want God's presence in your life, you're going to have to be in the word of God. And then when you begin to obey the written word of God, a beautiful thing's going to happen. The voice from the presence of God is going to start whispering in your ear. And the more you hear the voice, the more you yield to the voice of God, hallelujah, the more clear his voice is going to become. Yeah. So I'm talking to you about the glory. I'm talking to you about the presence of God. You know, last week we talked about how the enemy has tactics. We talked about Sanballat and Tobiah. We were in the book of Nehemiah. Yeah. And Sanballat and Tobiah represented the enemy. And the enemy has tactics. We talked about how he never quits. He will continue to move through his various tactics. First, he was grieved. Anytime you begin to do a work for the Lord, you grieve the enemy. It's an offense to him. How dare they think that they're going to stand up? I've been having them in bondage. Well, your days of holding me in bondage are over, you lying devil. Hallelujah. God is about to lift me up, pick me up, and move me out, and I'm about to do the work of the Lord. So you get in grief, then he gets angry, and so he wants us to be scared. He wants us to be stricken by fear. But the word of the Lord says that he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Yeah. Then he wants to make a deal. Listen to me, child of God. Every time you start to move properly in the ways of God, every time I'm about to go on to this. Every time, hallelujah, every time you begin to stand up, and move towards doing the will of God, I can assure you, he's going to try to make a deal with you. He's going to send someone your way, something your way, that's going to look good, sound good, smell good, and it might even think it's going to taste good. And he's going to bring it your way because he's trying to trip you up. He wants to make a deal with you to supplant the plan that God has for you. That's what happened in Nehemiah. He said, come on down off that wall. Come meet us in the, land, the plain of Ono. And we want to have a little talk. Nehemiah said, I'm not coming down from the work. And then lastly, he entered in through a marriage covenant. He gained access to restricted places. He had no right of being. And listen, I'm not trying to be too overly weird here. But look, when you and I give permission to the enemy, it's like we're entering into an agreement with him. That's right. We're allowing him to have permission. And as long as you want to keep on letting him have permission and have his way with you, then he's going to go ahead and hang out and stay. And as long as, and until you are willing to close the door and to say, no more, you lying devil, I'm not going to remain in a relationship 
with you. And so we did. We observed those tactics. He's a relentless pursuit to enter the temple, the house, the rooms within the temple. We talked about the fact that people have scars and wounds and heartaches in from their past. Right? Mama didn't treat me right. Daddy didn't treat me right. My first husband didn't treat me right. Brokenness, heartache, despair. People, they, they, they hurt me. You get it. And we, and we harbor these hurts on the inside of our heart. Or we open up door to sin and we let it linger too long. And the enemy is using those things in our soulish realm. We connected the temple and the house to the soul of who we are and how the enemy wants to come in and cause confusion and he wants to try to stay there and hinder our moving forward with the Lord. And we talked about the fact that to search us, we said about the reins. You remember that? How the psalmist said, search the reins. And the rain is like the is like the kidney and the liver. And how the high priest would cut open the animal. And they'd pull out the intestines and they were looking for tumors or anything that was in there. And that's the idea. Search me, God. Search me on the inside of who I am. Have your way with me, O oh Lord God, and release me from this thing and fill me up with your spirit. But if you're not, if you and I are not willing to let God search the innermost parts of our heart, to search the innermost parts of our lives, then we're just going to remain stuck in the same place. You can come up here for prayer, and it's a beautiful thing when you do. But you can do business with the Lord in your living room, my friend. In your bedroom with the light out, the candle burning, light bright, however you want to do it. You and the Lord can get along. But if you ain't willing to get along with the Lord and let him do business with you, you may very well sit there and live with friends in your house, and they ain't friends, heartaches, situations, circumstances, and even sometimes demonic entities. Because you gave permission. People like, and maybe sometimes, listen, you know the Lord's showing me we are so far from biblical Christianity today. People think that they're saved and they ain't even saved. That's our crying shame. People think that they're saved and they're not even saved. Lord, help us. Help us, oh Lord God. See, when you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior and the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of your life, you will know that you have been changed and that you will never be the same. It doesn't mean you're never going to mess up. But true salvation requires repentance. Yeah. We're in a place in the modern church right now that preachers aren't even, they're scared to talk about sin. They're scared to talk about repentance. They're scared to tell the truth for the way that it's written. They want to present it in some diluted fashion because they want to tickle people's ears. I'm not saying everybody, but you get the point. It's the relevant church. It's the seeker-sensitive church. They want to make a message to make you feel good about yourself so that you would know. You want to feel good? Let me tell you how you feel good. The Word of God says in Acts chapter 2 that with repentance comes refreshing. Right. You want refreshing from yeah. the Holy Spirit in your life? You want a supernatural miracle to take place in your life where He wakes you up where the Spirit of God comes alive on the inside of you? It's going to require repentance. Why, preacher? Because God said so. Because yeah. He wrote it in His Word. You want to know how deliverance comes in New Testament Christianity? You're not going to find a deliverance service for it. But now that doesn't mean that believers can't play around with sin long enough to let that sin. That's not what I'm saying, preach, uh, church. But I'm trying to tell you, you won't find a deliverance service after the cross. In the apostolic letters, in the book of Acts, in the book of Revelation, you're not going to find it. What you will find is you got an advocate with the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that you don't have to sin because of what the Lord has already done. But that if you do, you can go to him and you can repent. But repentance means something. Repentance means to change the mind. Repentance means to say, I was wrong. You were right. And I'm going to line myself up under your authority, under your word, oh Lord God. No more myself, but you, oh Lord God, will rule and reign upon my heart. And if you don't want to do that because you like sin, more than you want to be free. See, sometimes there's a battle going on in the yes. soulish part yes, of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. Jesus died on the cross to set you free from sin. That's a done deal. <clears throat> Not only so you could get into heaven, but so you could understand that you've been made free from the powers. That's right. That's right. But now you got to die daily 
to the soulless part of who you are, to your own will, to your own desires. Well, I like this kind of music. Okay, I'll be quiet then. And you just do it your way. And whenever you start to realize your way was the wrong way, because you're frustrated and you're irritated and it's not working for you, then what you will do with your heart, you will repent. And you will say, I was wrong and you were right. Okay. And when you repent, refreshing. Refreshing and renewal from the Holy Spirit. Yes. But I like the way, listen to me, I'll talk about what I want to because I was in three rehabs by the time I was 19. I like the way drugs and chemicals make my brain feel. It's against the word of the Lord. That's right. That's right. Pharmakia is the word and it means witchcraft. Are you practicing witchcraft? Not purposely. Many people are purposely practicing witchcraft just by doing drugs. But you're allowing yourself, the chemicals in your brain, to be manipulated. You're in a drunken state. You're not supposed to be living in a drunken state. You're supposed to be living sober, be ye filled with the Spirit of God. See, when you put chemicals in you, they diffuse into your bloodstream and they change your mind. Alcohol changes your mind. You can't see right. You can't hear right. You don't know where you're supposed to be going. It manipulates you. But when you're filled with the Spirit of God, you hear things that normal folk can't hear. And it's good. You see things that normal folk can't see. And the Spirit of God leads you and guides you in all truth. But I like the way, okay. Well then, take your free will that God gave you and keep on doing what you want to do. And when you get frustrated, irritated, aggravated, and you become broken to the place where you're ready to let the healer set you free, then you'll get on your knees and you'll cry out to your God and you'll say, I was wrong. You were right. right. And he will deliver you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the truth right there. there you go. Praise God. But he got tactics. The liars got tactics. He wants to get in. And you know what was interesting is that it wasn't until they read the law, which is the Bible. Right. For the children of Israel, the law was the Bible. It's not talking about the Ten Commandments. It's talking about the, the Old Testament law, which include the first five books of the Bible. But also the law is Torah. Whatever they had at that time, they read it. Ezra read it. And when they read it, they learned something. An Ammonite, long story, is not supposed to be in the temple of God. Well, lo and behold, Tobiah was an Ammonite. After they see, until you know the word of God, you don't even know the errors you can be transgressing. Right. So if you're ignorant of the word of God and you're walking outside of ignorance of the law, is no excuse. That's right. No, no, no. God is holy. He's given his word. He expects you to be in his word if you're a child of God. And, in, and whenever we walk outside of disobedience, now the Holy Spirit is, re- he, we're restricting our own walk with God whenever we do that. Amen? All right. So some of those tactics we learned about that enemy. Look, I just want to remind you of some things. Ephesians 4, 11 says he's, got, he's wily. Yep. The word in the Greek is methodia. It's where we get the word method from. It means trickery, deceit. 2 Corinthians eleven three. 3, he says he's subtle. Cunning, craftiness, it actually has the word skill connected to it. He's skillful in what he does. Yes, yes. But the, the, the word of God also says it's, it means to be beguiled. Yep. It, it, it also means to be seduced or to be deceived, influenced by trickery, even flattery. Listen to me, woman of God. If you're at work and you're working with men, and that man is telling you how pretty you look today, and you got a husband at home. You better rebuke that devil. Now there's a there's a way that a man might say something that ain't, but you'll know, you'll feel it in your spirit. Well, you look nice today. Okay, well that's good enough, sir. Now you can just stop right there. Thank you very much. You got a husband and all waiting for me. That's right. Same goes. It's some girl. Like, look, I'm just gonna be real with you. I look. I'm not trying to be weird, but the oh, my, Mr. Mac. No, 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 no. That's enough. All that. It gets it's getting weird. It's when they, when, okay, you told me I was good looking in the room one time. Oh, that was flattery. Okay, thank you. You done said it four times now. I told that lady. It's getting weird. 
<laughs> it's getting weird. I mean, I don't think I'm that good looking. I'm just telling you what this woman said. Okay. It's getting weird. Let's just, I'm a man of God. Hallelujah. I'm a pastor of a church. Thank you, though. That was nice of you to say that. I'm just trying to make a point. They will, the enemy will come in through deception. I'm going to be good. All right. Let's keep going. The main thought today is the presence of God. Amen. We desperately need it, church. Yes, yes, we do. The presence of God, the anointing of the Holy Spirit changes everything. You can be preaching the same message, the same truth. And when the anointing of the Holy Spirit backs it up, when the power of heaven backs it up, it starts to plant seeds in the, inside of the hearts of people's lives. It becomes like a firebrand that enters into the heart and it'll bring change. When the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit shows up, it turns bitter waters sweet. It brings healing. It brings hope. Yes. It guides. It heals. It changes things. The presence of God is everything. It brings salvation. Hallelujah. And Jesus paid a high price yes, so that you and I could have. Let me talk to you a little bit about the presence of the Lord. Look at this scripture. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yeah. The spirit of the Lord will bring liberty. He will bring freedom into your life. Do you believe that this morning, church? Yeah. I want you to know that the spirit of the Lord will bring liberty and freedom. He can do for you what I could never do for you. He can do for you what your husband or your wife cannot do for you. The spirit of the Lord brings liberty and freedom. Look at this, Psalm 1611. You will show me the path of life. Do you want direction? I know I do. In your presence is fullness of joy. Yes. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Yes. To be in the presence of the Lord means that the spirit of God wants to lead you and guide you. He wants to bring joy to your heart and in your life. You feel downcast, you feel downtrodden, you feel like you need something to help you get up. No, 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 no. Yeah, you do. You need more of the presence of the Lord in your life. Hallelujah. Look at this, Deuteronomy 31 and 6. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. Who? The enemy. The enemy that is against you. For Israel of old, it was the Nephilim, the giants. We don't have time to teach that right now. That's the word of God. Genesis 6. I can't help it if other preachers don't want to talk about it. That's their problem. I'm over here trying to teach you the truth. Get in the word. Learn what the word of God says. I can't believe that. That's sensationalism. Okay, well, then you're not believing the word of God. But when David sunk that rock in Goliath's head and cut his head off, a spirit was released. And that's a demonic spirit. And just as they faced the giants in the land, whenever Joshua and Caleb were the only two to come back with a good report, you now are facing demonic entities that want to destroy your life, that want to wreak havoc in your life. And I'm here to tell you that the same spirit of God that was all over David that let that rock sink in that giant's head is the same spirit. Spirit that lives on the inside of you, and you have authority in the name of Jesus. You got to start believing the Word of God and walking in the authority that God has given you through Christ. Jesus is our victorious warrior. David was a type of Christ. Goliath was a type of the enemy. You want freedom? You need to start walking in faith in Christ. And what he's done, you know, listen, this is the last one. I want you to see that. You have access to the presence of God. Yes. There should be nothing hindering you. It says it right here. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter to the holiest. What is he talking about? The holiest. The holiest of holies. The place beyond the veil. The place where the Ark of the Covenant was located. That had the mercy seat. That had cherubim on top of it. Uh, the, the, the place where the blood was applied. The place where God said his presence would dwell with Israel. Now in the New Testament, it says you have boldness to enter beyond the veil. How? By the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh. The Bible says in Matthew 27, I believe it's verse 51, that when Jesus gave up the ghost, he said, it is finished. He released the spirit of God, the earthquake and the veil that separated the holy place from the holy of holies was ripped from the top down to 
to the bottom. It says that it was, Josephus said it was four inches thick. It was embroidered. There was not a, it's not a curtain that you opened up. This is another story. You don't believe it, then that, that's okay. You don't have to believe what I'm going to tell you. I'm telling you, Jewish history says that the high priest every year for the Day of Atonement would be translated through the mail. Translated wow. through. Wow. To apply the blood. Amen. Yep. But between the cherubim. And the reason I want to bring up cherubim to you is because that has something to do with that glory cloud that I was showing you. Because we're about to get into Ezekiel and the vision that he talked about. Yeah. And, and I want you to understand that that glory cloud and those cherubim are all associated with the presence of God. Those cherubim were associated with the presence of God at the Ark of the Covenant. We're going to talk about that a little bit more as we keep going. But right now, I'm just trying to show you that the Lord has made access for you. When he died, the veil was ripped from top to bottom, signifying the way into the access to the presence of the Lord has already been made. It's already been made available for you. Jesus died on the cross to make it available for you. You can access the presence of God. He's one whisper away. So if there's any flesh that stands in the way, it's not the flesh of Jesus. His flesh was ripped. If there's any flesh that stands in the way of you and I accessing the grace of God, the presence of God, it's our own flesh. That's why our flesh must be crucified. Yes. Our will, our desires, everything that the Lord is speaking to us that needs to be moved out of the way. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Even sometimes good things, but not God things. Right. Can something be good and not be God? Do you know what you're I want to talk to you a little bit in the story that we're going to read it's about the cherubim. The best way I know how to describe this is that they were celestial beings. We would call them a form of angel. That's how we would use our language to describe it. There's other ways to describe it. Let's just keep it simple. Celestial beings that are associated with the presence of God. Interestingly, Ezekiel 28 verses 14 through 15 talks about Satan. And that before he was fallen, he was a cherub. He was a cherub, and we understand about the enemy, Lucifer, before he fell, that he had musical instruments in him. You can't prove it directly from the scripture, but the seemingly, knowing that cherubim are associated with the presence of God, knowing that the Bible says he had musical instruments in them, it makes sense to believe that he had something to do with worship, something to do with the presence of God within heaven. It only makes complete sense to know that if he is an angelic being that fell and he's connected to music and he's connected to the presence of God, that he in some way, shape, or form, because we do know that God's presence is connected to music in many ways. We've seen this happen. As we begin to release our worship to God, the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. And we see the presence of God moving in the place and filling the atmosphere and beginning to change situations and circumstances. And it doesn't even have to be in church. You can be driving down the road, going to work, and when you begin to sing praises to the Lord, the Holy Spirit will show up and He will begin to minister to your heart yes. and to your life. Yes. And He will begin yes. to bring change. That's right. Amen. Yes. But it makes sense that if He was expelled from the presence of God, that He wants to manipulate music, but that's, that's not even what I'm talking about. He wants to keep you out away from the presence of God. However he can do it. Whichever way he can do it. Big ways. Small ways. Pretty ways. Ugly ways. Any way he can keep you out. He's going to want to keep you out. So let's look at a couple of scriptures that talk about that. This is it right here. You are the anointed cherub. This is talking about him before his fall. You cover. So he's a cherub. He's a cherubim. You cover. I have set thee so. You were upon the holy mountain of God. You have walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. You were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created until iniquity was found in you. So he drove out the man. This is after sin. See, this is what it will show you. Disobedience will cause you to be driven away from the presence of God. Adam and Eve in the garden disobeyed God's word. And what happened was they were driven outside 
of the presence of God. And he said, cherubim and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep them from the tree of life. Because God said you can't live forever now that you have sin in you. The wages of sin is death. I thank God for God's eternal plan. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so listen, God is working hard, and we see it in this scripture. After the fall, they're driven from the presence of God. After the fall, cherubim representing, preventing people back access to the presence of God. After the fall, God starts a new plan, and he says, I will meet with you right here. I will meet with you, and I will commune with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. See, God says, construct me a tent where my presence can dwell. Put up a veil. Beyond the veil, I need an ark. I want a, 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 a top to the ark. You're going to call it the mercy seat. I want two cherubim. And once a year, you're going to put blood up there. And when you put blood there, this is the place I'm going to meet with you. See, it requires the blood of the Lamb. I need you to understand that. It requires the sacrifice of Jesus. And if you're wanting the presence of God and you're feeling all woozy in the presence of God and you're, and you're not interested in the blood of the Lamb, you might be want to be start thinking about which, what's making you feel woozy. That's right. Because you don't want no strange fire in your, in, in, in your, in your temple, That's child right. of God. No. That's right. You want to get into the presence of the Lord, you've got to go through the blood. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. And so uh, I, want you, I wanted you to see these things that, that the enemy is trying to banish people, but God is committed to bringing you back into the presence of the Lord. It gets even better than this because if you take uh, John chapter 1, he said in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, and through him he created all things that were created. Then it says, and the word became flesh. And dwelled amongst us. That word dwell means to sanctuary. He became yeah. a living tabernacle that housed the presence of God. And then when he died, he said that the spirit of God will be in you. Hallelujah. And he said this. He said that did you not know that you're the temple of God? See, now that the word of God is spoken and you and I yield to the truth and we receive Christ as our Savior, now the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of us. You need to understand that. That if you have been saved, that the Spirit of God now lives on the inside of your heart. He has made your heart his home. That's why you feel different when you got saying, well, I felt different for about a week. Okay, well, that's a problem because that means you started getting disobedient about a week later. But guess what? If you'll turn it around and you'll repent and you'll cry out to the Lord and you'll begin to learn his word and you'll begin to put godly things in your heart, he'll turn it around. That's all song. Turn it around and around and around. Late in the midnight hour, huh? Yeah. Paul and Silas, bound in chains and fetters in a Philippian prison, and the earth began to quake whenever they praised the Lord, and the yeah. chains broke off, and the prison cell opened up, and the Lord turned it around. Yeah. Late in the midnight hour, just when you think it's hopeless, just when you think there is no help, no. Late in the midnight hour, the Lord. It's going to turn it around. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. So the cherubim are associated, or it was associated with pushing man away after, after the enemy fell. And look, now, now I want to talk to you a little bit about this. See, there's also not, sometimes it's not blatant sin. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I'll keep you here all day. The soul, the body, the spirit. The spirit is the place when you got saved that the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of you. 1 Corinthians 6 and 17. Your spirit has become one with his spirit. Spirit cries out to spirit. He told the Samaritan woman that he that will worship me, there's coming a day when he that will worship me will worship me in spirit and in truth. When you get saved, the Holy Spirit becomes one with your spirit. Listen, your soul is still a problem, Christian. Yep. Your mind, your will, your emotions. Sometimes we let sin in, but sometimes it's not even sin. Sometimes it's good stuff. Before they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they only knew God. Now they know good and evil. It's a good thing. The Bible says a man that finds a wife is a good thing. Oh, well, I need a wife because I got this problem with lust. And, and now I can just 
do it legal, everything's going to be okay. That's a lie from the pit of hell. If you had a lust problem before, now you're just going to affect this woman you're about to marry with your lust problem. You need to get delivered from, a, from the bondage of lust. You need to be set free. Oh, I, I got this lust problem. I got this anger problem. But if I could just find the right woman, I think she'll just call my soul. That woman ain't going to calm your soul, man. That woman's going to poke you. That, because the Lord said, hallelujah. That, look, that, well, I can't even remember the script. It's out of Proverbs. Iron sharpens iron. Thank you, sis. Iron sharpens iron. Sparks flying. That woman will know exactly what button to push. Pop, and she's going to push it. Oh, Lord, she can't even help herself. You know why? Because the Lord telling her to push it. Uh, maybe not. Maybe that's her own flesh. We like just let him, let him get in that back room over there and push each other's buttons. And sooner or later, they're going to cry out to me. Amen. I'm going to begin to reveal things yes, to them. Yes. The point that I'm trying to make is, Christian, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Right, man. right. Now, look, if you're already up in a relationship and you shacked up with some dude and you don't want to kick the devil out, come on. then okay, go ahead and get married and call upon the Lord. Mm. Better to get married than to burn. Mm. But that ain't the answer to freedom over lust. Come on, sir. The answer to freedom over lust, lust is faith in Christ. Yes, yes. Right. Faith, faith in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Faith in the fact that he wants to kill the old and resurrect the new. Faith in the fact that you got a new identity, that you're a new creation in Christ yes. Jesus. He's not just your substitute. Right, you right. need to learn to identify. If That's he died, good. you die. If he rose, you rose. That's good. If he was received as glorified body, you now are a partaker of the divine nature. Yes, sir. The yes, Holy Lord. Spirit flowing in you, strengthening yes, you, changing your soul, changing your mind. Yes, yes. He's giving you a renewed mind. He wants to give you the mind of Christ. How am I getting that? If you don't get into this book, you ain't never going to get it. That's right. Oh, now you're teaching works. No, I'm not. I'm not teaching works. I'm teaching no. letting the word of God That's right. enter in on the inside of you. Yep. And letting the Spirit of God Hallelujah. work on you. Yes, Let God yes, have his way. I hope that makes yes, sense. Lord. See, because that's a good thing. A man that finds a wife finds a good thing. But in your soulish realm, in your own mind, with your mindset, you can twist the scripture and walk outside the will of God. Yes, yes. And the whole time thinking you're doing something to the Lord that the Lord never told you. Mm. To hook up with that man right Come there. On, he never, and if he did, he never told you on that timing. That's right. But oh Lord help us. Because let me tell you, I told somebody a while back, don't you kiss that man. <laughs> don't you kiss him. <laughs> oh, what you talking about, preacher? I'm an adult. I'll do what you do what you make. Go ahead. <laughs> kiss him with your lips if that's what you need to do. <laughs> but the kiss starts the whole thing, my friend. Yeah. Yep. And it goes from one thing to another thing. See, I heard this old black lady yep. one time at the clinic. Oh, it was the best piece of wisdom. She was just so quick, so succinct. Oh, I love, listen to me. That, 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 old, that old black culture back in the day, bro, look, I'm not going to get into all that because I'm a white boy and you ain't supposed to talk about that, but it's good stuff. <laughs> Listen to me. When you've been broken and when you've been in bondage and listen, all them spiritual hymns that came out of that, all that singing and loving on Jesus that came out of that, there's a power in that. Oh, it's a mess now. That culture's been beat up by the devil, but look, they still got some stuff lingering around in that culture. People that are filled with the wisdom of God, people that are filled with the spirit of God, and I'm telling you right there, the Lord sent that woman in the clinic, and we were just talking, this was about five years ago. I said, sis, I could tell she was a Christian, because she was like, oh, bless the Lord. That's all she was talking about, blessing Jesus. I said, sis, this was a mess. She said, let me tell you something, brother. She said they weren't, they weren't supposed to be getting all up in the sack together like they do. She didn't even say all that. She said this. She said before they was going to be man and wife, they were supposed to be brother and sister. Hey. Dude, I just sat there and chewed on that. I couldn't even see my patients. 
That was so much wisdom that came out of that woman's mouth. I was like, Lord, you just preached to the preacher. Man, before they were supposed to be man and wife, they were supposed to be brothers and sisters in the Lord. I don't know about you, but I ain't supposed to be kissing my little sister on the lips like that. They just don't seem right. I love you back there, sis, but that's just weird stuff. It happens sometimes, right? But the enemy's weird. The enemy is weird. All right. I don't want to be weird. Hallelujah. Anyway, the point that I'm trying to make, sometimes your soul can get in the way and you think you're doing something good. But a good thing don't mean it's a God thing. Come on. You better preach that. And you get ahead of the Lord and then you want to bellyache and cry. Oh, Lord. No, 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 no. Don't you blame that on God. You got outside the will of God. Now, what you can do, though, fall upon your knees, repent to your God, get your mind right, and he will bring restoration. It might not happen tomorrow at church. It might happen a week. It might happen a year. It might happen five years. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I know one thing. If you trust the Lord along the way, guess what? He ain't just giving you a promise. He won't heal it. He's giving you a promise. He's going to change you along the way. You know that the Lord is worried about changing you, my friend? That's it. Did you know that the Lord is worried about changing you on the inside of who you are? Right. Amen. I hope you get that, right? Praise God. All right. We need to keep moving here. So just wanted to let you know, though, look, uh, Numbers 13, when it said search the land, uh, Joshua Caleb, it said it was a recon mission. And I don't know much about the military, but that's in the recon team out there to check out the land. And also in Psalm 139 and uh, 23 and 24, let me see if I can get to that for you real quick. I love that scripture. Psalm 139, 23, 29. Search me, O God. Know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Are you willing to ask the Lord to search you? We need to be willing to ask the Lord to search you, us. Sometimes there's things on the inside of us that we don't even know there. Amen. Search us, Lord. It means to penetrate, to examine, to search out, to sound. I don't really know. I think that it's talking about like a sounding of an ocean going vessel. I'm not real sure what a sounding is. I think you drop, like back in the old days, you drop a line down there to see how deep it was. Yeah. There's probably newer technology now. Tell you how deep you are. About to run up on some rocks. Boy, you better do a sound real quick. Better check out if there's danger up ahead. That's good. Okay, search it out. Let a recon mission. That's what I'm going to talk to you. The Lord sends Ezekiel on a recon mission. You ready? Now, listen, I want to tell you, when you get to chapter 10, I'm not going to take the time to read it. But in chapter 10, it starts to talk about the glory of the Lord. It talks about the cherubim, two cherubim and wheels within wheels and the glory of God. And one of the wheel words, if you look in the Hebrew, it means a whirlwind. That's why I put that cloud of fire up there. It's like an enfolding whirlwind. But it seems like it's being hidden within the glory. The cherubim in an image of a throne and a sapphire. It's the color of beryl, which is like a topaz color, which is yellow and amber. And it's the glory of God. And dude, it's a, it's a vision. It's an aspect of prophecy known. He was a seer. S-E-E-R. He could see things. He could see visions. Hallelujah. And the Lord grabs him. That same image that Wade saw that he testified uh, when he was in prison. That image of that lava man that reached out his hand and shook Wade's hand. Listen, he, he, this is where it came from. It's in Ezekiel. That same image. And it snatches Ezekiel up by a lock of his hair, it says. Come with me, son of man, because i got to show you what they're doing in my house. Y'all ready? It's time for a recon mission. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 3. He put out the form of a hand, took me by a lock of my head. The Spirit lifted me up between the earth and heaven and brought me in visions of God to Jerusalem, to the entrance of the gateway of the inner court that faces north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provokes the jealousy. Now, I want you to understand, Ian, and we're talking about the inner court. We're talking about the entrance of the inner court, which is talking about the inner court of the temple, the first layer of the temple. There's an image of jealousy there. If you go on and you look at verse 4, it says, and the glory of the Lord was there too. 
So don't tell me that the presence of God can never be in the presence of evil. Because that's not true. I don't even want to get into the fact that one time the Lord used the lion's spirit to deceive Ahab. And the lion's spirit was in the presence of the Lord. I don't want to even bring up the part about Revelation chapter 12 where the enemy has gone before the presence of our God. And he has, he has accused the brethren day and night and day and night. But there's going to be a day when he will. But look, this is the house of the Lord. And it says that the image of jealousy was in the same place. Because can I tell you something? God don't want to leave you, my friend. If you are a true child of God, the Lord does not want to leave you. He, he wants to minister to you. He, he wants to set you free. It's a whole lot harder to run the Lord off than what the Pentecostal preachers are talking about. At the same time, it, it ain't exactly what the Baptist man is saying either. Once saved, always saved. No. The truth of the matter is, is that if we're not careful, we can run the presence of the Lord away. And that's what I wanted to show you. See, the right way is the way Nehemiah did. When Nehemiah found out that Tobiah was in the house of the Lord, you remember what he did? What did he do? Took all his furniture, all of his stuff, and threw it out on the lawn. Threw it outside. Get rid Get out. That's what we're supposed to do. When we see that something's not right in our heart and in our life, get out. Yes, yes. We don't want you here no more. But this is what happens to you. This is what happens to the house of the Lord if you let him in. All right? And I wanted you to see this. Then he said to me, Son of man, lift up your eyes towards the north. I lifted up my eyes toward the north. And behold, north of the altar gate in the entrance was this image of jealousy. I was just using that for proof text for myself so you could see it because the altar is part of the inner court. I'm trying to make a point. Because if you look at your King James Version, it's going to say the gate. But I want you to know it's talking about the gate that enters into the court where the altar was, which is the inner court before you get into the temple. All right? Eight six. he said, Son of man, do you see what they are doing? The great abominations that the house of Israel are committing here to drive me far from my sanctuary. But you will see still greater abominations. Listen, listen. Christian, or human being, whichever one you are, world, earthling, like Solomon said. If you're not saved, I'm talking to you as an earthling. If you are saved, I'm talking to you as a Christian. If you play around with disobedience and sin long enough, he is speaking to you and I, and he's saying, Son of man, do you see what they're doing? The great abominations that the house of Israel are committing here to drive me far from my sanctuary. Paul said, did you not know that you are the temple of God? God is holy. He wants to give you, listen, he no, it's not that he wants to give you freedom. He's already given you freedom. You're already free in Christ. The word of God says that the old has died and the new has resurrected. The word of God teaches us that what we need to do is we need to yield ourselves under the authority of God. And you know what will happen? The grace of God will flow in our heart. We need to submit to God, to the truth of his word, resist the devil, and the devil will flee from us. But I got to tell you as a preacher, I'm not holding back. The Lord wants truth spoken. The Lord wants holiness in his house. But what I'm not talking about sinless perfection, Christian. Jesus did that for us because we can't do it. But there's a place in the Christian, and I don't have time to bring down Romans 7 for sure. There's a place in the Christian where the sinful nature, the relationship between the sinful nature and the Christian can be put down. The switch off. Yeah, that's right. It's easy to turn it back on. Yeah. Your flesh can turn it back on. Legalistic rules and regulations and the teaching of works can turn it back on. That which does not put faith in Christ and what he's already done can turn it back on. But your own desires, yielding to the flesh, can turn it back on. Right. Normal Christianity is not supposed to be under the bondage of the sinful nature. Normal Christianity, biblical Christianity, New Testament book of Acts Christianity is supposed to be us walking in victory over the power of sin. Believing by faith the truth of God's word. But what he wants us to know is this, is that if you allow the sinful nature to be turned back on, 
and you keep on with these things in your life without coming to me and pleading with me to bring deliverance to you, you may very well get to the place where it seems like you're trying to drive me away from your sins. <coughs> Help us, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I don't want to drive him away, church. All right. Hallelujah. So look what he says. And he brought me to the entrance of the court. And when I looked, behold, there was a hole in the wall. I was thinking the first time I was writing all this, I could hear some of the people in the crowd saying, don't do it, preacher. Don't dig that deep. Just go ahead and leave that hole alone. Don't go there. Don't look and see what's in that hole. No, the Lord said, there's a hole in the wall. And look what he said. Then he said to me, son of man, dig in the wall. Dig in the wall. Start digging in that hole, boy. I want you to see what's going on on the inside of here. Dig in the wall. So I dug in the wall. And behold, there was an entrance. Oh, hidden stuff in the house of God. Oh, entrances hidden in the house of the Lord. You are the house of God, my friend. Listen to me. He said to me, go in and see the vile abominations that they are committing here. So I went in and saw. And there engraved on the wall all around was every form of creeping things and loathsome beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel. Hmm. I know a lot of people don't take notes anymore because I really use too much information. You, we never get out of here. But let me tell you something. Go back and read Romans chapter 1 today. Because you know what it says? They changed the image of God into corruptible images of creeping things and four-legged beasts. The word of the Lord says in the early, in the law, that those creeping things, there were certain creeping things you could eat. John the Baptist was eating locusts, my friend. There were certain types of locusts that were clean. Okay, but there were certain types of creepy things. I'm not saying, this is just what I started thinking when I was really thinking about it. You know how you, like, if you watch a weird movie, I don't watch weird movies anymore. I've seen some weird movies though. And they show like a, I'm just saying, like a witch or a vampire. And that witch is over there stirring her brew. You see spiders crawling around, <laughs> scorpions, snakes slithering, creeping things, ugly, unclean things. And that's what they're turning them into gods. I personally believe, and this is just a little side note, I don't have time to talk about it, that this is stuff interconnected to before the flood. Yeah. Intermingling of yeah. weird stuff. I personally believe, and you don't have to agree with me, that those Egyptian hieroglyphics of half horse, half man, Grecian yeah. gods, and all this stuff, I believe that stuff is really here. Yeah. I believe there's some weird stuff going yes, on there before is. the flood, and even probably still today. Yeah. You better get ready, Christian. You better get your seatbelt locked in and tighten up your belt. You better get your mind right. You better let the Holy Spirit, because listen, this world is changing. This world is changing and we just now are getting towards the end. And I'm going to tell you, you may not like this kind of preaching. I believe what the Lord's showing me. It's going to get worse before it gets better. You better listen, listen, American Christian. I'm talking to you on the bed. You better get your heart ready, American Christian. Cotton candy Christian. I we ain't brought no desitin to the preaching today. Come on. You better get your heart ready. Because listen to me, the Apostle Paul lost his head in the Mamertine prison. And Thomas got run through with a Brahmin spear. Mark was dragged behind a chariot through the streets of Egypt. Oh, but I'm an American. That stuff ain't going to happen to me. You better wake up, Christian. You better wake up. This land is defiled. That's it. We're willing to tell young people that you're not really a boy, you're really a girl. And, I, and if I lose my license over this, and that'd be the best thing I've ever heard in my life. The American Academy of Pediatrics now, at first they said it was a, it was abomination. They didn't say abomination. First they said it was wrong. Now they said, oh no, it's against the health of a young person not to allow them to think they're a girl when they're really a boy. Wow. Lies. Yeah. Lies from the enemy. Right. Trying to tell us that homosexuality is normal behavior. Lies. We've been living in the midst of a country where they're just aborting babies left and right. right. Yeah. Hold on a second. Do you know what the problem is? I'm going to tell you what the problem is. The problem is, is that they want to elevate. Look, you're not going to be able to believe me on this. They want to elevate the woman above God. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
y'all aren't ready for me to get into mother child deities. Y'all aren't ready for that. So we're just going to keep on going. Listen to me. We're God is not playing. We've been living in the midst of a church world that is suppressing the truth. That's right. Everything is just to tickle the ears. Everything is very superficial. If you get into the Word of God, you will see things in the Word of God that make it very clear that you and I are in a war. We are in a battle, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and spiritual wickedness. Yes. You over there thinking that the fight you're fighting is against that person you're at work with? No. Like mama used to say to me, you silly goose. <laughs> you silly goose. That is not what you're fighting. You are fighting demonic spirits. They are trying to destroy your life. But you have authority on that. You know what the church wants today? I'm going to tell you what they want. They want this nice looking young couple, mid-twenties. That's just good looking and always smiling. And 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 and, and, and a nice little dim lit strobe lights and all this other kind of stuff. Entertainment from the music. It kind of like make it comfortable. Just go ahead and make it comfortable. And give us a message. Give us 30 minutes. Get us in. Get us out. We'll still watch the Saints game. We can go ahead and get us a little bit of football. We feel good, though. We did our little religious duty. We got us a picket fence. Me and the wife. We got both. We got us good jobs. We got crown molding in the house. We got three kids. We're doing good, preacher. Don't start rattling the cage. We're doing good. Got all our friends. All our friends, we get our nails done together. And my, oh, preacher, I, get your nails done. I could care less. I'm trying to make a point. It's an illustration of what I'm trying to tell you where people are living. And if you don't like what I'm saying, you might be caught up in it. Get your nails done, my friend. Buy you a nice car if you can afford it. I'm trying to tell you, the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches are the thorn of the world that will wrap itself around the word of God and choke it out. Yes, sir. Right. Destroy your faith. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and the word of the Lord wants you and I to understand you're either in or you're out. That's right. And the true Christian is the one that's in the field. He's laboring in the field. He's doing the work of the harvest. He's plowing. He's sowing. He's watering. Oh, that's your job, preacher. That's what we pray you pay you for. No, 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 no. It's your job. Moses said, I would that all God's people would be filled with the Spirit of God and would prophesy. The book of Acts is the cloven tongues descended. They were all filled with the Spirit of God and they all began to speak in other tongues. Peter said, these men are not drunk as you suppose, but this is that which the prophet Joel spoke, that in the latter days, the Spirit of God would be poured upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters, they will prophesy and your old men will dream dreams. God wants to fill you and God wants to use you and that's true Christianity. And we live in the midst of a world where people don't want that. That's right. It's uncomfortable. And I get it. I never. I wasn't always on this, this much on fire. But I want to be in the right stuff, my friend. Yes. All right. The enemy has always got stuff in here. Then we got to hustle up. Here we go. And look, before them stood 70 men. The elders of the house of Israel, Jazaniah, son of Shaphan, standing among them. Each had his censer in his hand. The smoke went up cloud of incense went up. You know, he's an elder. He's a leader in Israel. Look, he's right there with him. He's up in the entrance, through the hole, follow the corridor. Here they are in the hidden places. And it will, I don't worship false idols. Well, listen to me, church. Do you know what demons of lust want you to do? Do I have to spell it out? I'm not going. But you know what they want you to do because you've been bound by them before, or at least you've been touched by them before. Yes. And when they're ready to be worshipped, you know what they do? <coughs> Come on. It's time. It's time for you to serve me. Whatever that looks like. Whatever level that looks like. Hey, don't forget me. I want my worship. Anger. Spirits of anger. You get the point. Yes. They want, and look, in the house of God, the people of God, in the hidden place, in the recesses of the heart, in the mind. That's what I'm trying to talk about. These things go on in the lives of the people of God, and God wants to set us free. Hallelujah. Look what it says here. Then said to me, son of man, oh, this is deep. 
Son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel are doing in the dark? Each in his room of pictures? Wow. <laughs> Dude, this is the word of the Lord. Don't you get mad at me, my friend. But I got a, a visual on this. I was like, he done dug through the hole. He saw the entrance, and now it looks like, seems like to me, he's walking through a corridor. He's like, go on, open this door. And there's old boy in the recliner looking at pornography. Smoking crack, snorting coke, taking pills. Lustful relationship outside the will of God. Full of anger, screaming at his wife, grabbing her, flirting with some other man at work, letting lust control on him, whatever. You get the point. Yes. Door after door. After door. <clears throat> the people of God playing around. That's why we got to ask the Lord search my heart. Search my heart. Find if there be anything. Look, for they say the Lord does not see us. The Lord has forsaken the land. Isn't that true, though? Because, look, I'm talking to you about something that I know because from experience. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Let's get this straight. Because I know, like, I can see it's very somber in the house right now. But let's get something straight right here. In the recliner looking at pornography. Uh, unfortunately, I've been bound by that. Can I be transparent? Probably. Yelling at your wife and actually putting her, yeah, it's all the sugar in, yeah, I've seen it before. Okay, Bella, we don't need no help. Uh, <laughs> all right, you know, whatever. Just name everything that I just named. I've been bound by it before. But I'm going to be free. I am free. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. We all been bound by the Lord wants to set us free. And we keep it hidden in the room, no. Don't let it stay hidden in the room, Christian. Let the Lord in. The Lord does not see us. The Lord has forsaken the land. No, you haven't. He sees everything. Sin deceives us into thinking that he sees no more. It sears our conscience, it blinds our eyes, it deafens our ears. He said also to me, you will see still greater abominations that they commit. Then he brought me to the entrance of the north gate of the house of the Lord. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. There's a long story there. The queen of heaven, Catholic church, listen. Yeah. Catholic church got a hymn that says, sing to the queen of heaven. That was the mama of Tammuz. That's that goes right. all the way back to Nimrod and his wife. People That's don't right. want to talk about that kind of stuff. Catholic church, that doesn't mean that there aren't Catholics that are true believers. That's not what I'm talking about. The Catholic system and the Catholic religion is not Christianity. It is pagan Babylonian mystery religion. Right. Period. Done deal. Yeah. And if you're not ready for that, you may very well be scooped up in the ecumenical movement that is taking place right now on the earth as we speak. Right. Where do you think the false is going to come from. I personally believe I know where the false problem is going to come from but, but, but let's just keep going. This is what this is. This is this has been going on, Christian. You understand? It's in the Word of God. Yep. It's in the Word of God. And he brought me into the inner court of the house of the Lord and behold at the entrance of the temple of the Lord between the porch and the altar. Does that ring a bell to anybody? Between the porch and the altar. Somebody want to give me a shout out what's supposed to be going on between the porch and the altar? The priests According to Joel chapter 2, verse 17, what's supposed to be going on between the porch and the altar? The priests and the ministers of the Lord are supposed to be weeping yes, sir. between the porch and the altar. Yes, sir. The priests and the ministers of the Lord are supposed to be interceding between the porch and the altar, crying on God to move upon the people of God that they would be changed. But what's going on? Between the porch and the altar, about 25 men with their backs to the temple of the Lord, their faces toward the east. And what were they doing? They were worshiping the sun. So Lord help us. Yeah. Didn't the glory like this is this is 10. I'm getting ready to close. Singers and musicians, if you could come up. If you go back and you read chapter 10, it's talking about that glory cloud. It's talking about that folding of fire. It's talking about how the cherubim were hidden within there, the wheels within wheels, the throne. It represents the presence of God. And what I want you to see is, is that at, he, the Lord didn't want to leave. The Lord did not want to leave the sanctuary. But at some point in time, judgment's coming on the earth. 
judgment's coming on people. And it says, Then the glory of the Lord went out from the threshold of the house, and cherubim stood, and, and the glory of the Lord stood over the cherubim. And the cherubim lifted up their wings and mounted up from the earth before my eyes as they went out with the wheels beside them. And they stood at the entrance of the east gate of the house of the Lord and the glory of the God of Israel was over them. See, there's a spot going way back whenever the children of Israel lost the Ark of the Covenant. And Eli was the priest. And if I'm not mistaken, he died, right? And one of his son's wives had a child. <clears throat> Because her son died. I can't remember if it was Hophni or Finney. I believe that that's how that went. And, one of them, and she, you know what she named him? Ichabod. Because the spirit of the Lord, the presence of the Lord has left this place. That's Ichabod. Right? The presence of the Lord finally leaves the house of God. As they begin to sing to the Lord, we're just going to worship God. We're going to go to church.